Hello and uh, welcome to Sovereign Earth. I think it's number 34 already. Excuse the reflection on the glasses. Um, and my cut from shaving earlier. <laughs> um, welcome to anybody who's out there. A couple of you have joined, I can see. John King, ever ever faithful. Lovely to cheers, John and Lynn. And Melanie, from all the way from the other side of the planet in California. And Mark Taft from Leicester. The old faithfuls all. But uh, lovely, yeah, really lovely to have you join me. And um, it's Celinda from Portugal. Lovely. Beautiful to have some company on a little adventure this night. And um, yeah, John and Lynn saying they're still here. And David Wetzelweiler is watching too. And welcome to you all and any others who join us. Um, really welcome. So um, I want to look this evening at something I've taught called half half brained half baked it's um there's a beautiful statement by einstein he says um the intuitive mind is a sacred gift some of you will know this the intuitive mind is a sacred gift the rational mind is a faithful servant um we've created a society where we honor the servant and we neglect or ignore and forget the gift um and I want to look at what I think is crucial in terms of the whole sovereign earth concept of having um, everything back in balance and the values and uh, the um, aspects of life that really matter and which can bring us back into tune with sovereign earth. And um, I think what we're looking at tonight is goes to the heart of it. And um, I'm going to start with a, a just a grounding song. Honouring the four elements and welcoming you all in. Um, balance, the four elements. Earth, my body, water, my blood, air, my breath, and fire, my spirit. Earth, my body, Water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Earth my body, water my blood, <laughs> air my breath and fire my spirits so there's a song honoring four elements in balance einstein also said we can't we're not going to solve a problem by applying the same thinking that's got us into the mess we're in now when i was at school and studying science it used to frustrate me that um Physics and chemistry, they have laws which say to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction or matter. Everything has a balance. And then, and I used to say, well, just as there's a rational, logical, um, sort of defined and uh, common and a sort of makes sense approach. So, so surely there must be an illogical, irrational, mysterious, nonsensical opposite which is kind of, I don't know, I felt in my teaching they didn't allow for that. And then when I came to study A-levels, I, I didn't study English, which is a natural for me. Um, I wrote a poem at the time when I was 17 studying for A-levels. I said, without certificates, why the fuss? Without certificates, miss the bus? Or is it just that we don't see the paradox of reality? And what matters is what we do and not what we're expected to. So I was rejecting the, sort of the whole certificates kind of notion of the world, and also the fact that in English they used to analyse and break down poems 
to the point where it killed the sort of creative beauty and mysticism of it for me. Um, and it's taken me most of my life to, to come to an understanding of why I felt that. And I have a, um, I have a man called Dr. Ian Gil McGilchrist to thank, and who's, who a lot of this, this programme is based around. Ian McGilchrist, he's really, yeah, he's an academic, but he gets the other side, if you like. Um, my, yeah, we'll see. Um, so we'll go into that a bit more. I'm going to sing another song. Um, some nights stay up till dawn as the moon sometimes does for the sun. Some nights stay up till dawn as the moon sometimes does for the sun. So we all know those nights where you do get the moon just on one half of the sky and the sun on the other and there's this balance isn't there, this beautiful balance. They kind of complement each other. Last night was magical because I think it's uh, is it Jupiter in the sky at the moment, something it was really beautiful last night. So here we are approaching spring equinox on Friday. Um, it, this point of changing from one half of the year to the other. I mean, in theory, we're moving from the dark half of the year to the light half. But because of what's going on, it feels a bit like we're moving into the dark half of the year in a funny way, paradoxically. But we're in a very strangeness strangeness and um, unusuality <laughs> we're in a place of um, non-comfort in a way and and not used to this place but how have we got here what are some of the i mean okay it's a natural phenomenon of, of sort of virus but there's many many um, contributions i think that as a species we're making towards the situation we find ourselves in. Now, so we, I want to look at the two halves of the brain. So the brain, it's equinox, and the brain has two halves. Why does it have two halves? That's very interesting. But it's crucial because they each have a different complementary function. And um, as we'll see, it's what Einstein at the start of this, when I quoted Einstein as, one's the sacred gift and one's the faithful servant. And we've just we're just concentrating on the faithful servant to the detriment of the sacred gift. So let's just have a brief look, and it is only a brief look at um, the different halves of the brain. So the brain's all about connections. The brain's all about connections, and that there are more. It's stunning to learn, and uh, I gather it's true. It's stunning to learn that. Um, there are more pathways through the brain than there are particles in the universe. Get your head around that for a moment. More pathways through the brain than there are particles in the universe. So in a brain, there's that many options. Phenomenal. So let's just take a moment. So one half of the brain, the left half of the brain, which is responsible for the right hand. The left half of the brain is, is to do with analysing and focus. So sharply focused attention. And the key, the, the trick to thinking of this one is like, if we're, if we're hunting prey, if you've got your eye on, I don't know, on say a deer, and you're focused on hunting. And for, many, for millennia and millennia, we were, this was our, this was our nature to focus and analyze and be precise and measure everything and um, the other half of the brain is so that this left half it refines and controls things it's very analytical it thinks of the human for brain it thinks of, of 
thinks of us as a machine, a complicated machine that can be broken down into component parts. Whereas the right hand of the brain is very different. The right hand of the brain, think of it as flowing like a river. So it flows like a river and it feels the nuances of life and it feels the flow and the difference. And it also has a sense of a wider aspect of flowing to the ocean, of, of the particles of water being absorbed back into the air and coming back into the river. It can sense that huge, the big picture. So if, if the left hand of the brain is focused on the prey and really sharply focused, it needs awareness around it to be aware of any threat, anything coming from the left field or from, the, from behind. And uh, the other half of the brain, the right half of the brain, has that sense um, of flow. It can't be fixed or pinned down. Um, and it has the whole picture rather than the individual pieces. It can get the context. So, um, it's important also to realise that these characteristics, although men often are associated with that more analytical and the right-handed practical focus. It's not just men who have that. Women have that too. Not always as dominant, but... And then just equally, women are often thought, to, you know, in the right brain, that, that sense of flow and that sense of the bigger picture of that intuited wholeness, interconnectedness. It can be associated more with the feminine, but it isn't necessarily. And we, we're all interdependent and they weave. I mean, I'm certainly someone who, for whom the, that, that right hand side of the brain has played a, a bigger part in my life than the left hand. And they're both necessary. They're both equally necessary. Um, it's, it's interesting also that the left brain thinks it knows it all <laughs> and the right brain, the, knows that it doesn't. It has that sense of not knowing. It doesn't know the answer. It allows for not knowing. And our world has been tending ever more towards the left brain and um, to the detriment of that right hand brain. And there's a story in a minute which will illustrate that. And the, the consequences for our planet are catastrophic as we see. But it's evident, even in this last week, um, with decisions around yeah, this, this talk of herd immunity and we're following the science, we're following the science. Well, that's half the picture, I'd suggest. And there's something else, which is actually, interestingly, starting to come in more the last couple of days. Um, so... Ian McGilchrist, and I'd recommend you follow up if you're interested in any of this, tells the story of the master and the emissary, first to, which he first came across through Nietzsche. And I'll tell you the story because it's fascinating. So the master and the emissary. There was a master who, and it could be a mistress, you can think of it as a masculine or feminine, but the way it's told, um, the master had... Um, the interest of the community at, at, uh, at heart and, uh, and looked after the community and the tribe and had a sense of the whole of the society that they lived in. But as that society expanded and grew, he needed help and he, he um, enlisted the help of an emissary. Um, to go out into the world and find out all the, f yeah, get the data, get the facts, what's going on out there so that I can make the right decision for my people, for, so, that the, so that our society can thrive. And for, and for a good while, that's what happened. The master sort of resided in the community and the emissary went out and found out all the information, came back, fed it in, the, the, the right decisions, balanced decisions were made. But then this, the emissary, you can think of it as a servant, the emissary went out once and thought, I'm doing all the hard work here, I'm doing the donkey work. The, the, the master is, is sat, back, sat back there doing, doing nothing at all. I bring, I bring all the information and 
they're, they're, they're enjoying my, the fruits of my labours. So the emissary decided to don the cloak of the master and to assume all the benefits of the master and didn't do the work. And of course, because they weren't working together, their community and their society fell apart, dis disintegrated and crumbled. And that's very much, in a sense, what's been happening and is happening with our society. The, uh, yes, the, the analytical, the data gatherer is going out, but not feeding it into the, uh, the that, that part which can look for the whole, for the good of the, the greater good, for the greater good. And um, where the wisdom lies is in the, the betweenness, in between those places, holding both. And it's perfect for the equinox, this holding of both. Um, we've got the left brain more interested in assessing outcomes, ticking boxes, performance measuring, targets, measure everything, value nothing. We know all that. And... Um, neglecting this other side of the brain which is interesting where the spirit where a concept of the spirit resides in the right hand brain and many people don't get that but equally many people who reside in the spiritual side of the brain don't get the practical i can own some of that here's a song honoring both first of all every breath taken in Ooh, by the woman who loves and by the man who loves goes to fill the water trough where the spirit horses drink where the spirit horses drink every breath taken in woo by the woman who loves and by the man who loves goes to fill the water trough where the spirit horses drink where the spirit horses drink where the spirit horses drink Now, I just want to finish off with um, a couple of things that Ian McGilchrist, Dr. Ian McGilchrist, talks about. To illust and this is a really key insight for me as to what's going on and what has been going on in our society is we've lost our way and how we can get back through that awareness to putting sovereign earth centre stage, the in-betweenness of not knowing with the analytical. So what's fascinating is when we have when it's when someone has a stroke, one side of the brain can close down and of course there's different results depending on which side of the brain closes down. So he talks about a, something called a soliloquy. It doesn't matter, don't get hung up on complicated words, but it's an old um I think so there was Plato or Socrates, they said Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, therefore Socrates is a man. There's three statements. And Ian McGilchrist came up with these three statements. And just bear with me while it's... it's um, all monkeys climb trees. The porcupine is a monkey. So porcupines climb trees. Now we know that's nonsense or not true. Although apparently there is a porcupine that climbs trees just to <laughs> complicate things. But when someone has a stroke, if the, if the analytical left-hand side of the brain goes, so the left-hand analytical is gone and you're left with still that, um, the one that's got the whole context, they look at that statement 
and say, of course, porcupines can't climb trees. That's that's nonsense. That's that you can't. That doesn't make sense. But if the um, right hand side of the brain goes the the the, the conceptual, the, the 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 river flowing bit. So you're left with the analytical. You're left with the servant part of the brain in the story. It looks at that statement. Monkey, all monkeys climb trees. A porcupine is a monkey. Therefore, porcupines climb trees. And it says, that's true. That statement is true. And it shows the distinction between the brain. One part of the brain can look at wider and think, that's not true. And the other part looks at the statement and says, it says it, so it must be true. And there's as aspects of our society. We've been working in this context for too long. And education is a lot about that, sadly. Um, and what seals it for me is fascinating. Um, apparently, Ian McGilchrist was told, told of this woman. This woman wrote to him and said, my brother, oh, yeah, my, um, a friend of mine, her brother died. And she went to the morgue to visit him in the morgue and um, to pay her last respects. And she put her hand on his arm and she thought, I must be imagining things. That the arm is still warm. And then she felt his pulse and he had a pulse. She said, oh my God, I've got to do something about this. And she ran out and she said to the nurse, I know you're not going to believe this, but my, my brother's alive. You must come. And my brother's alive. And the nurse said, no, he's dead. And she said, what do you mean he's dead? It says so here on this form. <laughs> now, the, 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 the good outcome to that story is that she found a doctor, that this woman, who injected the, her brother with adrenaline and he came back to, he, he lived. But what an interesting story. So, yeah, reconnecting with, yeah, re-honouring that part of the brain that is our sacred gift, which is neglected. And I think it's neglected. I think our government shows many signs of neglecting it and many governments around the world. They're going for the one part, the analytical, the, yeah whatever. I'm sure you can find your own examples. So just to finish off, can we, and to bring this together in a way that makes some sense, I hope. I hope you've been able to follow some of it. Um, can I invite us to close our eyes and to take ourselves to the sacred grove, a grove of trees, the global grove. There are enough of us here to, to make a global grove. So we come together from all over the world, breathing into our bodies and breathing into this circle of beautiful trees. Beautiful circle of trees. And we are on the edge of that. And as we stand there, I invite us to imagine, because our imaginations are so powerful and capable of magic and wonder. I imagine before us in that circle, two halves of our brain, one on one side of the circle and the other half of a brain on the other side. Two halves of our brain laid out before us, large and beautiful and really yeah, a, a miracle. And I would like to invite you to step into the left hand side of the brain be laid before you. And just honour the analytical, that which is capable of discernment and shaving away until you get to the fine detail. Let's stay with that side of the brain for a moment. And a degree of gratitude. We all have this in our in us. And then moving across to the other side of the circle into the right hand part of the brain. That which is yeah more spiritual, more capable of understanding the whole, or have or not understanding it, but allowing for no and having that sense of flow, connection of all 
And again, just give gratitude for a moment. And then because it's the equinox, equal days and equal nights on Friday at just half three in the morning or somewhere thereabouts here, coming up to spring equinox, when we honour the light half and the dark half of the year. And I invite us to think of the brain in, in that healthy, we need both the dark half of the year and the light half of the year for, it, for the year to have any meaning and sense. And our brain reflects that equinox, that dual aspect. So I invite us to come and stand on the equator <laughs> between our brains, where we can honour both. We honour both. And we need both in this world right now. So I pray together that the sacred gift of the intuition, the intuitive mind, will not be neglected and that the faithful servant will find his role again to serve the sacred gift by working tirelessly to refine and to put and to work and craft the solutions that the that the intuitive mind can present as gifts. So just allowing all that and just stepping back the edge of the circle in your mind's eye and giving thanks and coming back into this space here together and opening your eyes if you feel moved to do so. So a slightly different aspect to the program this tonight but all about sovereign earth if, if, if we honour those both sides bring it together honour all the brain we can um, regain our healthy connection with sovereign earth so wherever you are I wish you lots of love and blessings on um, Friday because we're in this I don't know where you are in the world but we're not quite in complete lockdown although I have a cough <coughs> so I'm Technically, I should be self-isolating. I am largely self-isolated, but um, I still have, have to go out for food at the moment. But I've got, I'm getting help on that. Anyway, I will be being a responsible adult for once and <laughs> taking myself out of circulation. Um, but um, on Friday, to celebrate the equinox, to celebrate song, as we did last Friday, the gift of song as medicine, which needed in this time. If you if you feel inclined, join us, join me, possibly Fleur as well to help me on with the equinox ritual on um, Friday eight to eight p.m. And wherever you are, lots of love and and yeah, we pray mightily for all the people who are struggling and trying to make sense of this time. And I hope this program may have given an insight into part of the solution, perhaps. Bye bye.